Okay, welcome back to part two. Isn't this turning out really nice? Um, now, I'm going to carry on and paint a swan, okay? I just did a very light sketch with a pointy brush, um, just to give me a little sense of where we're going. Uh, but I think, all in all, it's looking pretty good, isn't it? The one thing I was worried about was that the body would look bigger than the head and vice versa, so I might have to just adjust it slightly. But anyway... Let's crack on. I'm going to start with the body. Now, up by the wings. Um, I'm going to start with a nice uh, a nice mauve, I think. But we'll play this by ear. We'll see as we go. We can always chop and change. You know the story. Uh, so I'm going to take a little phthalo blue. I'll mix it in the centre here, okay? Some phthalo blue, some white, and a little crimson. And we do have some beautiful highlights on the swan, don't we? So I'm going to start with this sort of, um, I suppose, a middle colour. Because, you know, a lot of people, especially beginning and starting out, they tend to start with the lighter colours and work in to their darks. But with oils, it's always better to start with your darker shades and put your highlights on top. Okay? Um, that's the, kind of the, the general rule with painting, um, in oils specifically. Now I'm using a very thin coat of paint for this, all right? I don't want to put too much paint on this because that will then allow me to put my highlights on top quite easily without spoiling the painting because it's very difficult if you have a lot of thick paint on your, your canvas, very difficult to put the lighter colors on afterwards. Now I just want to make this slightly sort of Kind of a rough edge. I don't want a perfectly smooth edge because we have feathers and all kinds of things sticking out. So I don't want to make this absolutely perfect, if you know what I mean. Take a bit more phthalo blue. I'm going to start making it much deeper as it comes down. Phthalo blue, some crimson, a little more phthalo. And when I'm going into the darker shades, I'm making it slightly thicker. Just to give it more covering power, that's all really. There we go. Pop that down like that. Don't worry about all your little shapes and all that kind of thing. We can worry about all those. You know those little lights and darks? Don't worry about all of those. We'll get those in soon. Now I'm going to start putting in a little cadmium red into this. Because as it comes down, it gets... There's a lovely warm section in here, isn't there? So it gets quite warm as it comes down. I'm just going to put some cadmium red first. Okay, just soften that in. Like that. Up there. Then I'm going to start introducing some uh, burnt sienna with crimson, okay? Because we have a lovely rich reddy kind of a brown in there. I don't know if you can see that on the reference photograph, but it's a lovely reddy kind of a brown softening in. I'm just going to soften it in with my brush. Creating that kind of shape of that dark in there. And let's come right across over to our point over here. Kind of just flick it upwards, flick it around, just to kind of soften it in. We don't want it too kind of solid. We want to soften it in slightly, give it a little bit of texture as well at the same time. Does that make sense? Now, uh, let's take a look, right. As we come across, I'm going to start lightening it ever so slightly, okay? I'm going to start taking some more burnt sienna, which has slipped down my palette. But what harm? A little bit of Naples yellow and some cadmium red, okay? And these three colours will give... I want to get a nice sort of that nice kind of glow. You see the way there's a lovely glow underneath here. Um, the sun kind of coming around the side of the back of the swan, catching the feathers. So I want to get that lovely rich colour in. I might take some cadmium red and a hint of cadmium yellow, actually. Just a hint. And I'm going to come down. I won't go out too far with this. So it's just for this section here. Then I'm going to take a hint of burnt umber 
and I'm going to darken it in here. So even though this is a typical white swan, because it's a sunset, you have all these different colours coming into play. And it's just wonderful, it really is. I don't want to soften this too much just here. Now as it comes down, I'm going to start taking some Naples yellow and I'm going to put a little Naples yellow, soften it in here. Just little circles, just soften it through. I'll take a little bit of white and a little bit of crimson. And I'm going to soften that in towards the end. I know now this looks a little bit on the bright side, but we're going to be darkening a lot of this as well as we go, okay? Now, the next thing I want to do is get this lovely dark in underneath, and then we can kind of work away on all of this afterwards. Um, so it's just a case of looking at the reference photograph, looking at what colours you can see or what you can interpret, and go from there. Just try it. Um, if it doesn't work out, you can change it. So I'm going to go now into a nice plum. I'm going to take some crimson and some phthalo blue. I'll take a hint of Naples yellow, okay? Touch more blue, I don't want it too pink. So I'm going for a soft kind of a plum color. And I'm using Naples yellow as opposed to white because that just keeps it kind of warm and it keeps it pasty as well. So I'm going to just get the edge of this now in, nice and sharp like that, okay? Don't worry about your points, your details or anything like that. Let's just sharpen this in here like this. And once I have that then, I'm going to start now going for some nice dark colours. I'm going to take some phthalo blue. I'll take a hint of crimson and some black, okay? And I'm going to go for some nice dark colours just along here. And I'm going to drag it across. And even on the reference photograph, you can see the bottom of the swan here kind of disappears in, almost disappears into the dark reflection as well. Now, I'm going to take a little black with some burnt umber. I just want to keep it warm down here, okay? I don't want to go pure black. I want to keep it nice and warm. And then I'm going to use this colour to kind of pick out that kind of dark shadowy area just under the wing there, okay? You see the way it comes up and it kind of softens across like this. I'm just going to soften this around with tiny little circle of motions. I just want to soften it up into that lighter colour. So we're just starting to build up our darker shades now, okay? Now I'm going to pull this one back at a slight angle to create the impression of the feathers sort of swooping backwards and coming up into that area there, okay? So I'm going to sit back now and just take a quick look at this. Yeah, well, see, we're getting there very slowly. It's just coming together nice and slowly. Now I think the next thing I should do is switch to a smaller brush. I'm going to switch to a small detailed brush. I'm going to take some. Now I need to get some more phthalo blue on my palette. So I do apologise. And I'm going to take a small pointy brush, get some phthalo blue some crimson and I think with that colour, that's not a bad colour now, it's a really deep deep rich purple, okay? I'm going to paint the edge of that tail. I'm going to go right out and we're going to go in now and give this some nice dark colour here, okay? You see? Some nice dark colour. And I'm going to go right out and paint. Now there's probably slightly more of an angle on this than there is in the photograph, so let me just bring it down slightly.
go to a point and I'm going to come across the end with that and in the photograph it does almost look just black all right it does so let's get some black and crimson go for a nice dark color and I'm going to bring that across the crimson will help just warm the black slightly see? so it's not a pure black do you understand what I mean and let's come across let's bring this out a bit here and I'm going to just kind of soften that in pull it with my brush just kind of flick it in Okay, now we're getting there, just slowly. I think actually I need to make this tail a little bit higher up slightly and I'm going to adjust some of this as well because I may have made a little mistake, well not a mistake but it's something that you don't see sometimes until you actually sit back and look. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take another clean brush, all right, nice clean brush, and I'm going to bring this colour down slightly. Now what I might do first is take a little tissue, because I want to get this right, I just, I really want to get this right. I'm going to take a tiny amount of thinners on my tissue, okay, so the point of these lessons and my tutorials is that I always show the mistakes. I like to show the mistakes because in almost every video you watch on YouTube, you'll see everything going perfectly. They never show you the mistakes that they make, okay? And how to fix them. So if I want to take this out slightly, I'm just taking some thinners on my tissue. I'm going to go down and bring it off. Okay, I'm just going to rub it off slightly with my tissue because that will allow me to put new color in there much easier. So I'm going to mix some of this colour here, okay? Um, let me see now, let me take a touch of crimson, touch of Naples yellow. I'll take a tiny touch of phthalo blue. And it's just a kind of a dry brush. Let me just check this now. Okay, that's not bad. I'm going to come down and cut into the swan, just there, okay? Then I'll take my small brush, I'll take a little of the darker colour and I'm just going to gently pretend this is going right across and through. You see what I mean? And that thing is a kind of a continuation of that ripple going across. All right, now what we can do then is take our small brush again, get some of this nice purple going, get some crimson, some phthalo blue, little white. And I'm gonna start putting in the outside edge of this wing here okay so it's out of it comes across it's almost it's almost actually straight here and then it kind of comes down like this and it comes in again does that make sense Just fill this in here. Now I could just use my little flat brush as well for this and do it much quicker, but I think this will give me a little bit more control. Just for this section anyway. Then I'll take a little bit of black, that dark colour. 
I go in underneath here with that. So that's not too bad now, so far. Now the next thing I'm going to do is take some more purple, okay? I'm going to take some phthalo blue, some crimson, and some white. And I want to mix kind of even amounts of crimson and blue in this. I don't want it too, um, too blue, all right? And I'm going to go up here. Uh, let me just get some more crimson. Now I'm going to pick out the top of the wing here. There's another piece of a wing kind of popping down. Or it's kind of sticking up here rather. And it's going to go like that. Then it comes down like that. And I'll be doing all the light colours then in a moment, okay? So, you know, let's not get carried away. Let's just take our time with this, do it one step at a time. Now I'm going to take some phthalo blue with a hint of black. I'm just going to put in, again, just want to pick out this dark area here. You see, just kind of flicking it across. Um, take a hint more of the phthalo blue. little bit there it's starting to come together now a little bit isn't it and we have a nice dark area over here where one wing kind of goes in front of the other so and take some again some nice rich purple for this Kind of soften it out. I'm just kind of going around in little circles. I'm softening it together, you see, softening it back out into the paint that's already there. It's still slightly wet from part one. So I'm just going to kind of soften it out then very gently. I'm going to add more pink as it comes out. Now, I'm going to soften it in there just slightly. I'm going to take a little of the darker colour, that dark black. You can see a little hint of darker colour just down here. I kind of begin to see it kind of come together, can't you? Slightly. Ever so slightly. Just ever so slightly. Okay. The next thing I'm going to do is start putting some very rich brights in. All right. And let me see now. Let's mix a nice colour for this. It's a very rich, bright, orangey kind of a colour going around the tops of these, isn't there? Very bright. So now I need to get some fresh cadmium yellow pale on my palette. Okay. For this. So I'm thinking... Cadmium yellow pale, so a little of that, and perhaps some cadmium red. Let's try some cadmium red for a change. Let's give that a chance and mix a nice bright orange, but it's a very kind of a pinky orange, isn't it? So you see, cadmium red makes it very on the warm orangey side, where it's crimson. If I take a hint of crimson, that will make it much kind of on the um, pinky side of orange okay so let's just keep mixing this now until we get what we think is the color we need a nice pinky kind of an orange let's try this so we have a pinky kind of a color up here up on top and it will be difficult doing this because of the fact that 
the paint is all still wet underneath so it will be difficult to get these real bright 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 colors but let's just go a little bit at a time and I'll just keep cleaning the brush Keep cleaning, make it nice and nice and clean as you go. And I'm going to soften it in just a little here and there. Right, I'm going to start now again with some crimson. And you know what? I might take some Naples yellow as well. That seems to work a little better. So it's just trial and error really. You know, um, you try something, if you don't think it looks right, try something else. Now I'm gonna go across the top of the wing here, the second wing, the one closest to us. As you can see, that lovely bright highlight just catching that. I'll follow it around. Like so. And put in a touch of highlight here. We get there, not to worry. This is a slow process, it takes time. Now I want to go up and I want to go across the tail nice little light catching there just one brush stroke and we've a lovely light coming down here as well don't we so it's all just practice 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 okay just keep going until you feel you're happy enough Put a nice warm orange in here. And I'll go again. I just keep going until you're happy, okay? I'm gonna go even brighter. I'm gonna go with some cadmium yellow, some white, and I'm gonna take a hint of Crimson, tiniest, tiniest hint. I'm gonna go really bright just here. And perhaps just one or two there. Now I'm going to go on to the head and come back to all of this. We still have a lot to do on this. But I want to go back to the head and try and get some of the head done. So I'm going to go with, uh, let me see, I'll go with a flat, okay? I'm going to go with a small flat brush, just to give me more control, yeah? And let's start with a nice dark colour. I'm going to get some burnt umber. And I want to take some crimson because it's quite warm. Although it's dark, it's quite a warm colour, isn't it? Burnt on burnt crimson. And I'm going to start with the back end here, okay? This is where it's nice and dark in here. And I'm not sure now about the drawing on this. I'm not sure if it's fairly accurate or not, but let's just go and let's just try it and see. Right down here, like that. Now I'm going to come out a little bit more here, just to give it a bit more strength, if you understand what I mean. And let's go along here. Mm. 
Okay, yeah, I'm fairly happy with that for now. I'll go back to a small round brush and let's just put in the detail. Just, well, not the detail, just the final little points just on his beak. So let's just take some black and this will be a nice silhouette then against that water in the background. okay that is okay now what i'm going to do is because the light is hitting it in certain places i mean you know there's a big difference between this and that so we want to tie them together so the best way to do that is take some colors out of this so again a nice mauve okay let's give it a nice mauve pink blue and a little white okay and then now we'll go even more on the red side with this because we have a lot of brown already on it so a little more on the red side of mauve and I'm just going to pop a hint of mauve here and there, you see? Soften it in, but not too much. I don't want them mixing together completely. So the idea is you can see hints of mauve then on that dark as well. Does that make sense? And a little bit in the shadow, that will bring the shadowy side to life as well. Again, not mixing too much. And we can even go with more pink here, possibly a touch of it here. Okay, you see what I mean? Then I'm going to mix a deep purple, so phthalo blue and crimson. Okay, but more on the blue side this time. And I'm going to put a deep purple down here. So although we started with a brown, dark brown, these hints of mauves and purple then help tie everything together, okay? Now I'm going to go with that colour along the base here as well. And I'm almost going to kind of soften it down into the reflection as well. Just so it kind of almost disappears from one into the other. You see? Now I'm cleaning my brush again. And we have a lovely light hitting the swan's neck don't we beautiful light and let me just have a look at the colors on that now so we have an orange so i'm going to take some crimson with some cadmium yellow just for just for now just for a moment let's take a hint of naples yellow and i'm going to try that bright color just to see okay I'm going to bring it down like that. I'm going to soften it. Like that. Yeah, that's not bad. And I'm going to take a hint of crimson with some Naples yellow. And put a hint of that nice pinky colour in there as well. Softening them together. Okay, now we're getting somewhere, aren't we? The next thing I'm going to do is some lights, some highlights on this. So, with a medium flat brush, some white, some phthalo blue, and a little crimson, okay? Going with a bright, bright, bluey mauve. And I really want to hit, let's actually take some more blue and some more pink. I just want to create some real bright spots down here you can see there's some beautiful bright spots hitting the feathers and I'll put another little touch of that here and I just want to create a separation of the different wings okay you kind of see what I mean take a little bit more blue because that blue will give the shadowed area some real life, a real kind of a punch. You see? It really does help. And I'm just kind of flicking it around just to create the impression of 
uh, rough kind of feathered areas, okay? And up here the same, look. A little bit there. And let's see, a uh, little bit there. A little bit there. So, you know, it's kind of coming to life a little bit now, isn't it? Albeit a little slowly, but it's coming to life nonetheless. I'm going to put a little hint of that colour in here. You can see there's a beautiful hint of that colour just catching in there as well. Okay, and I'm going to put a little hint of it in here as well. I'm going to soften it back in. Then I'm going to go with some nice darks because I feel it needs some extra dark colours. So I'm going to go with Burnt Umber, a little black and some crimson. Because there is some real, real, real dark shades in there as well, isn't there? So for example, I'm going to come across the bottom here. And I'm going to kind of just go around in tiny little swirly marks just to create texture and soften them together a little. Okay. Just like that. I want to give more of a punch to the underside of this wing here, where you can see there's more of a shape in there. And then I'm going to soften it across again into that lighter colour. Okay. Then um, I'm going to darken here. I'm just using the corner of my brush. And I'll darken maybe just a little bit just up here, just to show separation of the wings just a little bit. And a little bit under here. Now you don't have to go to all this trouble if you don't like, if you feel it's too complicated, you could just simplify it. Just paint a nice little swan, keep it simple. You know, you don't have to go to all these lengths. I'm going to take some burnt umber and I'm going to pop some burnt umber in down here. There's a lot of brown in down there. Just kind of rough it up with your brush. Okay. How are we looking with this? Hmm. I'm going to go back to my small brush. I'm going to take a little phthalo blue again. And some crimson. And I'm just going to darken ever so slightly some of this up here. And perhaps merge some of that in just there. I'm also going to just brighten some of the highlights, okay? Because the highlights are still, they still don't have that punch. And I might add a little more pink down in the reflections as well. So let me take some crimson. And I think also I'm going to make that tail a little bit longer. I think it needs to be a little bit longer, doesn't it? I'm going to take some of this dark colour I have. And I'm going to just bring it out a little bit more. Because I feel, compared to the rest of the swan, I feel it's just not long enough. I'm going to take some crimson with some Naples yellow. And I'm going to put, give this a nice bright highlight. And then I'm going to swoop it down and in like this. Okay. I might even go a bit more. I might make it slightly flatter. Okay. 
Okay. And I'm going to take some of this darker colour again and I'm going to make it slightly thicker, that darker side, make it slightly thicker down here. You see, that's working out a bit better now, isn't it? I'm going to clean that brush well and then I'm going to get some real bright colours. Naples yellow, crimson, and I'm going to just add a lot more lights to these, okay? And try some cadmium yellow in that as well with some Naples yellow and a touch of crimson. I just really want to get these nice and colourful. I'm going to try some pink with some white, so crimson with white. I want to get some nice bright pink on some of these. And I don't want to overdo this because there's a real chance that you can really overdo all of this and you may even end up making it look worse, which is probably what I'm doing, but this is what I call fiddling. Fiddling with something when there's really no need. I'm going to put a hint of um, a pink just around the top here. Just to accentuate the glow of the sun. And a touch of black on the eye. And then I'm going to just kind of fix up my reflection, my darkness on the reflection here and there, okay? So for example, I'm going to put a little bit here. And I'm going to just make some of this a little bit more on the solid side. All right. So for example, I'm going to put a little few tiny ripples. And I'm going to put a couple over on that side. So it's basically then just a case of going around and having a look and see where you can strengthen some colours. Okay, just like that. And you can do as much or as little of this as you please. It's entirely up to yourself. So I come over here, maybe add one or two to this. And in here, I might put a little couple of small ones, just kind of wiggling around here and there. Now, with the backs of these, I'm gonna pull these outwards, okay? Down and out. And that will give us more height on the ripples. And over here, a couple of small ones just coming off of those. 
Then I'm going to add some lights. I'm going to put some lights in. What I mean by lights is, for example, phthalo blue and white. Okay. And I'm going to just brighten up some parts of these here. Just give them a little bit more life. Okay. That's all. So there, for example, um, I'm going to put one or two around here. Like that. Um, put one or two around here like that. It's really just to brighten up some areas. Um, I'm going to put one or two around some of these as well. And I'm going to carry on some of the lights through some of the reflection as well. You see, it just adds a bit more life to some of them. And I do the very same with some of the brighter highlights on the reflections. So some Naples yellow, cadmium yellow and a little pink. So you can see what I mean. Just adding in a bit more colour to some of them. And I can see there's a couple kind of popping in here and there as well. Down on this side. Couple of hints of little touches of colour just to give a little sense of detail, but not actual detail. Do you understand what I mean? So, my friends, I think. We should leave it at that. Um, I'm quite happy with that now. That turned out very, very nice, I must say. I'm very, very happy. I was going to do something there now, but it's gone out of my head. A um, little bit of blue, a little bit of pink. I What was I going to do? Oh, yeah. I'm going to just pop a little bit of that colour in. Just here and there. Illuminate water just slightly yep and my friends I think I will call this done I don't want to overdo it um, you know if you feel happy with what you've achieved I think you should leave it alone I'm just going to sign this and we'll call this a day. I'm very, very happy with this. S. Conway. And with that, my friends, let me zoom in and give you an idea of what we have created. Now, I'm, there's, there's one spot up there which is just really annoying me. And you probably get this all the time yourselves. Just that real bright highlight up there. I just want to really... There, that's better. So let me just fix the camera for a moment and then I'm going to zoom in and show you how this looks. So you can see those bright highlights done by the wing. They do kind of help. Now I do want to just sit them down slightly. So I'm going to pop a little bit of darker colour just in underneath and soften it up, okay? Just take the edge off of them, that's all. And I'm going to bring the darkness of that ripple out as well. Ah, that's better now, isn't it? So there we go, my friends. Done. Swan in the water. Lots of, it's just really lots of colour, this painting. 
lots and lots of colour. That's what I'm trying to achieve. So something nice and different. That's all. Let me swing the camera around here now. I hope this is okay. And there we are. Finished. Thank you so, so much. I will go around the edge of that canvas now with the same colours. Um, just to wrap it around, you know. Uh, perhaps even just follow some of those ripples just around the corners. You don't have to be too perfect with that because the front of the painting is the most important really. So once, as long as the colours around the edge um, are similar, that's all you need to do, okay? So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you so much. Uh, if you do want to support me, pop over to Patreon. There are some fantastic tutorials over there. Lots of beautiful sunsets, cottages, skies, mountains, all that kind of stuff. If you're interested in learning a bit more in depth. So, um, and again, thank you so much for your support. Okay, I'll be back next week. Um, I'll be back on Patreon next week and a couple of days after that, YouTube again. And let's, uh, let's have a bit more fun with painting. God bless you all. Thank you so much for your help and support. And if you do wish to send me your uh, paintings for critique or advice or anything whatsoever, please email me at stephenconway12 gmail.com. Um, in the meantime, uh, happy painting. And I'll see you again very soon. Take care, my friends. And thank you again.